Hello, my name is Wayne Gardner. We operate 7L Ranch along with my wife, my daughter, and my son-in-law. We uh, run 500 cow-calf pairs. We background about 700 of our own calves and then we custom feed another two or 300 calves. Uh, we usually uh, background the calves until April sometime or March and we uh, run an on farm sale where we sell all the steer calves off. All the heifer calves are are kept and the replacements are, are sorted out and the rest of them go go uh, out on grass for the summer. We we try our best to keep our cattle out of the yards. We uh, you still need some pens just for, for sorting purposes and and the odd little group of odds and ends. But our big groups of cattle are kept in the fields including our calves. Our calves are wintered out in fields that we grow silage on, so we uh, move windbreaks around. We spread out a little bit of straw just to keep the cattle moving across the field to uh, to get the manure spread evenly so we can work it in in the spring and uh, grow another crop of silage with very little inputs. It, uh, it cuts our cost tremendously on the backgrounding calves, and the nice part of it is if we're backgrounding custom calves, somebody else is paying the bill, they are uh, paying for all the nutrients that those calves deposit on our fields and uh, help us produce uh, a lower cost crop the following year. Uh, there's a lot of our fields now have a fair bit of uh, bush around the edges which uh, which is great for shelter. Uh, it's, it's mostly natural bush. We uh, we do use some portable windbreaks but uh, the natural bush is by far superior to any windbreak board you can you can put up. We uh, plan on fencing a quite a bit of uh, natural bush out so the cattle don't destroy it over the over the next period so it's sustainable for the next generation. Our, uh, our cows, we bale graze our cows. They, uh, they are actually in pastures about three miles from home so so they don't see the yard hardly at all other than weaning time when we bring them all home, wean the calves and then take them back. This also reduces our manure cost. Our, our manure that we haul out is just a little bit out of sorting pens. One manure spreader for one day is all it takes. Uh, being that we're running 1,500 head of cattle, I would estimate that manure bill normally to be $1,500 to $2,000 or $15,000 to $20,000. And I really believe that we're getting way more benefit out of our manure as the cattle spread it out. None of it is, is uh, runs down the, through the yard and out into the ditches and runs away. All the urine soaks right in as soon as it's deposited there. We, uh, when we uh, set up our bale grazing, I like to see our bales in a, in a grid of about 30 feet to give an even spread of manure when the cows are bale grazing. It, uh, this is done in the summertime. We bale or make our bales, we put sisal twine on it so we don't have to remove twine. And the bales, we just pick them up with a bale picker and a tractor and we move them directly to the bale grazing site. We, uh, we never, a lot of bales never are touched with a front end loader. In fact, probably 90% of our bales. So we set them out in, in rows. Uh, we make long, narrow fields with portable electric fence. Most fields are, are only uh, 200 yards wide. So, as we all know, we get a lot of snow in Manitoba at times, so there's times when the snow is deep and difficult to get through. So if you only have to tramp through a couple hundred yards to move your electric wire in the wintertime, it's much easier than trying to do a quarter mile, especially someone my age. Uh, we use a snowmobile if the snow gets too deep and we will just go out one day and drive back and forth and make tracks beside the bale so you can walk on it. And that makes it a lot easier. The cows, cows can tramp through a lot more snow than, than you and I so it, uh, it's, it's never an issue for the cows to, to get to the bales. We've had bales that are virtually covered over in snow and the cows still get in it and eat them out. What we find when the snow gets that deep, the cows tend to clean one bale up before they go to the next. We usually uh, give the cows enough feed for 
four to seven to eight days. I know some people stretch it longer, some are less. Uh, it also depends on what our schedule is when we, we plan what day that it works best for us to go back out and move a wire. Um, I don't believe there's any more waste bale grazing than there is feeding bales in a pen where the cattle are, uh, are tramping it into wet ground. The cattle seem to stay very clean, very healthy, being that everything is frozen all the time. There's never a, never a wet manure pack. And uh, it just seems better all the way around. Uh, snow, we use snow for some of our cow herds. Uh, we usually split our cow herd in two in the fall at uh, preg checking time. Uh, the middle-aged cows, the strong cows, the fatter cows, they, uh, they go as herd one and they're the ones that'll go on the poorer feed and probably uh, most cases just snow. The weaker cows, the old cows, first calf heifers, they will be in an area where there's better feed and if we can we'll put water, we'll have water for them. I believe water is a benefit because it just makes common sense that if you're going to melt snow to, for moisture it's going to take calories to do that which is going to cost you some feed. So if water is available without spending too much money on it I think it's a benefit. If it's not available and you have to spend a lot of money I think the calories in the extra feed is probably the cheaper way to go. Uh, as I was saying we move our our bales directly into the bale grazing area from the fields that they were baled in and we move this to as short a distance as we can. We'll set up bale grazing uh, wherever is closest to where the cattle have been or the bales have been made. I figure in the winter time if I was to feed these cows with a tractor it would take me at least three hours a day and a tractor and a man and fuel a reasonable price of forty dollars an hour for all three that works out to $24,000 for the winter on 200 days. Right now we spend maybe two hours a week at $30 an hour for a man and that includes partly using a snowmobile. So that costs us $1,000. So there's a $23,000 saving there in my opinion. You add that to the manure savings of another $20,000, there's forty dollars or $50,000 on our operation that uh, that we just don't have to spend. Costs, the cattle industry has always been tight. We've managed to maintain and grow our herd all through BSC and, uh, and, and still survive where just by doing, reduce, reducing our costs. And this is one of the ways we've been able to reduce our costs. As our cow herd grew, our facilities in our yard where we used to calve in January were no longer big enough. And I just couldn't see any sense spending a bunch of money to build more facilities that we couldn't uh, and still have the manure and all the rest of it to, to uh, attend with. A lot of our bale grazing areas are, are away from our yard because that's where we have our natural bush for shelter. Uh, we virtually all the time our cows will have access to natural bush. Many times they never go near it but there is access there if you do get bad weather and they do need it. So trees are just a tremendous, tremendous benefit. What we find is the trees tend to hold the snow. Lots of times if you have a year without much snow, that's the only place you're going to find snow for the cows to lick. Uh, around here, the, we're in a grain farming area and there's getting to be very few trees. And I, I believe this contributes to, to flooding big time. Most of the fields, the grain fields, are left bare. They freeze, they're frozen solid. When the snow melts in the spring, all that water runs off. Where you take our grasslands and our treed areas, it's very seldom there's much frost in the ground. And as the mist, snow melts slowly, a lot more of that moisture goes in the ground. I think if there was more of that, uh, if there was across the country, we would see a lot less major floods threatening our urban neighbors. We're very happy with our operation here and we're very happy to have uh, visitors. Uh, we do appreciate a call to set up a time that's convenient so we have time to show you around. And uh, other than that, any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call anytime. I'm more than happy to, to pass our information on and uh, thank you.